If you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the two-in-one category. I love the ability to take a laptop, flip it into tablet mode, take some notes with the pen in a classroom or in a meeting. To me, that's fantastic. But some of these two-in-ones can get very expensive. As you note, I just looked at the Dell XPS 15 two-in-one. That comes in over $2,000. I have the HP Spectre X360 with its KB Lake G processor on the way. That comes in about $1,500 or $1,600. So I wanted to find something less than $1,000, has good looks, premium specs, and overall can get the job done. And that's where I found this. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo Yoga 730. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot of very exciting things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. And it recently passed another milestone, 25,000 subscribers. Thanks everybody for supporting the channel. The Lenovo Yoga 730 comes in at a very affordable 799 and for that you're getting a very premium high-end 2-in-1 with very good build and very good looks overall. It's available in three colors, copper, silver, and what I have here, iron gray. It's a dark gray and it really looks very sleek and very elegant looking. Overall, I really love this color. The Yoga 730 has a 13.3 inch IPS multi-touch display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's 165 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It covers the color gamut really well at 118% sRGB above the category average of 111. It has very deep blacks and very vibrant accurate colors at a 0.6 Delta E score, well above the category average of 2.98. That's very good. It has excellent viewing angles, the color saturation is very good, and it also does get pretty bright, although it's not the brightest display I've seen. At 287 nits, it's slightly below average. It is good for indoor use though, but for outdoor use, because of the glossy display, it may be an issue as well. And it has very thin bezels in line with flagship tune ones here in 2018. That's pretty good. Now there is no 4K option in the 13 inch model, but this full HD display is excellent. Overall, I think Lenovo did a very good job. Now as far as pen options are concerned, you have two. There's the Lenovo Active Pen for an additional $40 at the time of checkout, or you can spring for the more expensive Lenovo Active Pen 2 for $59. Now I went with the first version and I'm not sure what the pressure sensitivity level is because it is either 4096, but also says 2048. So I'm not really sure which one it is, but nonetheless, the pen did work well. Now in the box, you get a pen holder that sticks into the USB port where you can store your pen. That's a nice touch. You get a quadruple A battery, extra tips, and the tip remover. Now I like this idea of using the pen holder in the USB port to allow you to store the pen. It's actually a pretty clever idea. Overall, I'm impressed. Now the pen uses the Wacom AES technology, the same as the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 we recently checked out. It worked well, pressure sensitivity seemed to be pretty good. It also had pretty good palm rejection, although you'll notice the screen wobble when you're using it in laptop mode. It definitely comes in handy to take some notes or for artists who want to sketch out some drawings, this certainly will get the job done. Lenovo has slimmed down the 730 from its predecessor, the 720. At 2.62 pounds or 1.19 kilograms, this is very thin and light and very portable. Overall build quality and construction is excellent. And it has a decent array of ports. Good to see a USB type A port, not something you see on thin and light tuned ones anymore. It's becoming more of a rarity. And you have a power button which lights up, letting you know the device is powered on. That's a nice touch. And on the other side, you have two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports. I love to see that, especially at a $799 product. You can connect two 4K monitors and you can also connect an external GPU. Unfortunately, there's no micro SD card slot or full size SD card slot for storage expansion. That's a bit disappointing. In the back of the device, you have some cooling vents as well as some cooling vents on the bottom along with your dual JBL branded speakers. We'll talk more about the sound in just a little bit. Now opening it up, you can see that it does have dual fans, which it does work well and it does stay quiet and relatively cool. That's overall pretty good. Not much you can change out here as the RAM is soldered on. The only thing I think you can replace here is the Wi-Fi card. That's it. 
And as you can see here, it has a 45 watt hour battery and your two JBL speakers. The fingerprint sensor is located below the keyboard off to the right, registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. Setup was easy and great for use with Windows Hello login. Overall, they did a pretty good job with the fingerprint sensor. Now, as you know, Lenovo is known for making some pretty nice keyboards, especially its ThinkPad line, but this is no exception as well. This has 1.1 millimeters of key travel, although on the shallow side, it was comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It also had pretty good tactile feedback. I say it's a pretty good keyboard. And the keyboard has multi-stage backlighting, making it great for dimly lit rooms and low light environments. Great for getting work done when you don't have a lot of light. That's pretty good. And this precision touchpad is excellent. As you know, I'm a big fan of precision drivers. This is no exception. Two finger scrolling was a pleasure. Windows 10 gestures worked certainly as advertised. And of course, this being a yoga convertible, you can flip it into tent mode. Great for recipes in the kitchen and consuming media. You could also put it into stand mode, also great for recipes in the kitchen, and putting it into tablet mode, great for use with your finger or with the pen. But me, I'm more of a traditionalist, I like laptop mode. The Yoga 730 comes with Intel's 8th generation processors, either the Core i5 or the Core i7. You can get 8 or 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and storage options start at 128 gigabytes up to 512 gigabytes. And that's SSD storage. Now I chose the entry level model at $799, you get the Core i5-8250U with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. And I wanted to see how performance would fare in this entry level model at a very affordable $799. And I'm glad to say it did well. Now, as you can see, it did very well on the Geekbench 4 multi-core score, and it also did well on the Dirt 3 test, meaning you can do some gaming on this. Although it is not meant for AAA gaming, for that, I would go for something with a little bit more power and has a dedicated graphics processor. And it stays relatively cool. It got only around 80 degrees Fahrenheit by the touchpad when I streamed an HD video from YouTube. The bottom of the device got around 92 degrees Fahrenheit, and it also got around 92 degrees between the G and H key. Anything below 95 degrees is considered comfortable. Overall, they did a good job on the thermals. The entry level model used a light on SSD, and here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Good on the reads, decent on the writes, overall not bad. As I mentioned earlier, there are two JBL speakers on the bottom. They're actually pretty good, get pretty loud, a hint of bass, and overall I think they're pretty good. Now let's hear it in action. There's a 720p front-facing webcam, now let's see it in action. So this is the front-facing webcam on the Lenovo Yoga 730. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second camera. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. It's certainly good for doing Skype, obviously for video conferencing. This certainly can get the job done. I actually think this is pretty good, but again, I wanna know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. But there is a trade-off for having such a thin and light device. It's 45 watt hour battery lasted just a little bit over seven hours on my streaming test. That's below the category average of eight hours and 51 minutes and certainly was outdone by its competition. So battery life, I would say is just slightly below average. A great display, good performance, great versatility in a tune one and nice looks with the fact that you get Thunderbolt 3 support at a great price of $799, making Lenovo Yogo 730 an excellent value. I'm going to give it an 88%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the Lenovo Yoga 730? I actually really love it. And at $799, to me, this might be the best value out there. It's a premium 13-inch 2-in-1. It has the looks. It has the performance. Now, the only thing that's not great about this is its battery life. Now, it comes in a little bit over seven hours on my web streaming test, and that was not great. Now, it's a little bit below the category average, but it's not terrible. But everything else about this is very premium. Performance was very good. Overall looks, that iron gray looks fantastic. The build quality is first rate. I really have very little negative things to say about the Yoga 730. 
But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. What do you think about it? I actually really like it. To me, it's one of the best values out there at $7.99. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can get it. Now, coming up on my channel, I have some very exciting news. I have the Huawei MateBook X Pro on the way. I got tired of waiting for Huawei to send me one, so I bit the bullet. I'm importing it from China. I should have it hopefully this week, next week at the latest. I will, as soon as I get it, I will do my unboxing and first impressions video, and then I'll follow it with my full review. I'm really excited about that one because it's got the 13.9 inch display this time around. It has a touch screen, and it also has the MX150 GPU with two gigabytes of video memory. I went for that model. That cost me about $1,600. I know I'm paying a premium because I got to bring it here to the United States something that it's not available in the United States, which to me is a shame because from everything I've read, everything I've heard, this is a fantastic ultra portable. So I'm looking forward to reviewing it. I also have the KB Lake G version of the HP Spectre X360 15T. I'm looking forward to that to compare it to the results I got from the Dell XPS 15 in one So we'll see how the KB Lake Gs are faring here in these early stages. But I'm curious to know what you think about those. Let me know in the comment section below. Anything about them you want me to test, let me know. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.